Good morning. Good morning. This is Minister Nehemiah Newman coming to you once again from Shady Dale Church of God, 4626 Strongwood Street, Houston, Texas, 77016, where Darius Miller is the pastor, and I'm the Sunday school superintendent. God had chosen me this morning to bring the Sunday school, and we have an awesome lesson this morning. You know, this, this is true lesson, and, and it can be argumentative. But we're going to get into our lesson before we do that. So let's go to God. Most gracious, kind, and heavenly Father. Come this morning before you with a heart of thanks and praise. So grateful and thankful this morning, dear Lord, that you allow me to see another day, Lord. A new day that you have created. And Lord, you chose me to be part of it. And I'm just so grateful and thankful that I had another opportunity to praise you, Lord. Another opportunity to say thank you. And I'm just so grateful and thankful this morning for what you've done for me on this morning, Lord. You woke me this morning, closed in my right mind, with a portion of my health and strength, dear Lord. All the business that, that you said you was a plow, Heavenly Father, was all on point. I thank you this morning for you being a God of promise. When you make a promise to your people that you don't go back on your promise, Lord, as you're saying in your way, just trust me and wait on me. Know that I am God. And then we're going to have to learn to wait on God. And that's what he said. We've got to learn how to wait on him. Because if we wait on him, we know that everything, Lord, is going to work out. So I'm just grateful and thankful that I ain't here to disturb phone calls, dear Lord, over the course of the night. They just, morning, Lord. Family members seem to be well. And Lord, I ask you to just continue to bless them. Bless their family members. Bless them all right now, far and near. Bless their household, bless they going out and coming in, Lord. And Lord, I think I can continue to bless me. Bless my household, bless my family, bless my going out and coming in, Lord. And Lord, I ask you to just bless the church family. Bless each and every one of them, dear Lord. Family by family, dear Lord. And just bless their household and just bless they going out and coming in. Bless the pastor and the first lady. Dear Lord, in a special way. Bless their household and their family members. Bless they going out and coming in, Lord. And so, Lord, just bless us all right now, Lord. And I'm grateful and thankful this morning that you chose me to do the lesson and continue asking you for more wisdom and knowledge and understanding of your mind. Dear Lord, I ask you to just bless the Sunday school this morning. Dear Lord, when all is said and done, I pray that somebody will get something out of this Sunday school lesson, dear Lord, that will change their lives forever. And Lord, just be with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, good morning. Good morning again. This is July the 3rd, 2022. This is week five of our lesson this morning, of our uh, summer edition. And what we're going to be studying about today, we're going to start about the prologue of the Gospel of John, which describes all things being made through. Christ, the Word. When the Word became flesh and entered this world, He brought light and life, revealing the glory, of, the glory of God the Father, the creative power of the One who made the universe. It continues to flow through the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. And you know, we're going to talk about how. Everything begun. Our well, topic today, well, you know, I like to say before I get started that we need to put, you know, uh, make good of our time because the days are evil and we need to know how we need to be do make, doing, taking care of business. And we need to be taking care of our father's business. And the only way I know through it is how he has taught us. Through love, through loving one another. And this is the only way that we're going to leave this place and go to the next place. It's through love. If you say you love Christ and don't love your brother, you deceive yourself. And the truth ain't in you. So we're going to have to love one another whether we want to or not. And God commanded us that we love our enemy as well. 
So we need to be learning how to do this. Till we are uh, uh, chopping up each other and killing each other about on those streets and road rage and, and just shooting up people's homes and killing little kids. This ain't going to cut it. You cannot call that love. So we'll say that he's on a rampage. And we need, we need, need to make sure that we need to rebuke him. We need to kick him under the bus and be about our father's business through loving one another. So that's what we need to be doing this morning. And not all this morning, all the time. Showing love. Because he showed us and he demonstrated his love to us by sending this son down on this cross on this earth down to die for the sins of the world. So we need to be about our father's business. Okay, let's look at and see what our topic is today. The word becomes flesh. You know, like I say, this is true and this can be offered. So let's just get in the, our lesson this morning and let's get with it. What is our topic about today? The people are often curious about how things begun. The Gospel of John explained that Jesus, the Word, was God's creator and redeeming agent in the world. And we know that's what he done. He sent his son down upon his cross to die for the sins and sins of the world. He is our redeeming agent. And anybody that is curious about how everything begun, stay with me in this lesson. Because a lot of people <laughs> don't believe and how everything got stuck. There's been a lot of theories, things happen by chance. But by chance, don't have a chance of ever knowing what it takes to create things. Only God knows. And the scriptures say he was here before anything happened. Got a hard big bang. But I'm here today with the word of God telling you this morning how things have begun and how it started off. So let's take a closer look at what we are saying. And I pray that when this Sunday school lesson is over, for all the people that are curious about how things begun at the end of this lesson, they'll know. So let's get in our lesson. We can say, what is our and we always say what is our status about today, I'll read it again. The people are often curious about how things are gone. The Gospel of John explained that Jesus, the Word, was God created and redeeming agent in the world. And he came and he sent his son down here to straighten all this stuff out and let us know. You know, he is the redeeming agent of the world. All this is going to be coming from John chapter 1. Verses 1 through 14. What topics we're going to be talking about today this morning? Incarnation, light, beginning, and commitment. Okay, let's look at our bio background and see what our bio background is saying. See, our passage for today can be divided by subject as follows. Verse 1 through 5 say the revelation. There's a revelation of Jesus Christ. He came. He came down upon this earth. Verse 6 and 11, rejection. That's what you can do. You can believe it or you can reject it. That's part two. Verse 12 and 14 say acceptance. So you can accept whatever is said today or you can reject it. But this is a revelation of Jesus Christ, and I said, I pray that at the end of this Sunday school lesson this morning that we all going to be on the same page. But I know we won't be on, all the, on the same page because some people are still going to not believe in this. Okay, let's finish reading. See, the gospel writer John proclaimed that for everything existed before everything existed, there was Jesus Christ, who had always been and is himself God. Jesus' life is the light of the world. 
and dogs just cannot put it out. It's going to come to be night, but the dog cannot put out the light. John the Baptist tried to get this message across to the people. Most rejected his witness. And many people today reject those who testify of Jesus Christ. And that's what I was saying. This ain't never stopped. There are people that don't believe in him. It's still going on today. And you hear what it said. It said, John the Baptist tried to get this message across to the people. Most rejected his witness. And many people today reject those who testify of Jesus. But any who receives a testimony with an open heart. And that's what I was saying. Pray when all this is done, we're going to have an open heart. And believe in the name of Jesus, the name of Christ, gains the right to become children of God. And when, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Whenever we believe on the name of Jesus Christ, we have the right to become children of God. That is a privilege and the, and the right that God gives us. So we're going to get on into our lesson. As our Bible background, like I said, it's going to be acceptance. It's going to be rejection. And it's that way today. And it'll be that way until Christ comes back. And he said that one day he come back to get his people. And he's giving us all ample time to get it together. Because if you don't have it together when he come back, I feel sorry for you. I'm going to believe. I'm going to keep on believing this until the end of time. And when he come back, I want to be ready. God wants to be ready when he come back. He said he's giving a lot of time now. Some saints, locals on, the one standing in the background, he giving us ample time to get us gift to believe on the name of Jesus Christ. Because when he come back and you don't believe that, it's going to be too late. Like the 10 brides, the little five of wise and five of <coughs> foolish. Mine came ready. Mine brought enough oil to cover them. But the other five, they didn't, they didn't they weren't think about that. They weren't ready. They thought they were ready. But when they came, they didn't have a level of just what they left for just then. When they left went out, they wanted some from the ones that had it. They know you had ample time to get this together. You got to go back and get you some more. But when he came back, when they came back, Brad Groom and Winnie, the door was closed. See, we don't want to be left like that. When Jesus comes, we want to be ready. The songwriter said, will you be ready when Jesus comes? So he's giving us ample time now, saints. Look at the only one standing in the background. And I'll add the ones and ones that's going to be there. This lesson. They're giving us ample time to get together. So let's get into our lesson. And see, just see what our lesson is telling. Look at what they say. John chapter 1, verse 1 through 5. This is the revelation. In the beginning. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. <clears throat> and the word was God. Verse 2 said he was with God in the beginning. He was with God in the beginning before anything happened. Before anything happened. And I just want to put this in. And the word has spoken of this. He prepared a place for us. He said before anything was created. He didn't want to have to get out there in the middle of the going and going and try to complete, prepare a place for us. He prepared it before anything 
and they ain't just supposed to mount it for anything had. We gone. And like I said, he couldn't wait out till he get me over there in Metal Lake or somewhere out there to try to prepare a place for us. He said he prepared this before anything had happened. Verse 3 say, through him all things was made that has been made. We also in him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. You know what I'm saying? You have a Sunday school lesson there this morning. Verse 5 said, The light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And that's what I was saying earlier. Night falls. The night cannot outdo the light. When the night comes, darkness goes away. And so, okay. We see it and look at verse 5 again. The light shined in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Now, let's look and see what those verses were saying, those five verses were saying. Look at verse 1 and 3. John writer takes us back to the same point as the book of Genesis in the beginning. And I always like to say, I, I'm going to stay with these scriptures. These scriptures is telling us what's going on, and what we must do. Like I say, I might step out a little bit and kind of elaborate on some of it, but I'm staying strictly with the word. He said, and tells us that Jesus Christ was there. He was and he was and is the word. Pre-existent, the wisdom and power of God, the first cause of all things. He the first cause of all things. And like I was saying earlier, a lot of people believe in uh, that uh, things just happen by chance. Things did not happen by chance. And I'm here to tell you this moment. Take a look around you. Look at the trees. Look at me. And look at yourself and see others like me. All the trees, all this stuff that's been built. All this stuff that was built, all these buildings and cars built by man. But God is the source of all things. He made all the stuff that make the buildings, makes the cars. He said, God is the first cause of all things. All things. Even all that stuff he put in the earth to sustain the earth. Iron. Gold, copper, zinc, whatever you make, whatever it may be, that we use to create things. He made it all, it's all things for the, it, his call. Let's spend a reading God, personal expression to him, to himself, to human being, Christ the Lord. Jesus existed before all time. He was with God. He was with God. If by chance was going to do it, he don't know when to get started with this. All this here had a certain time to unfold. And by chance would have never knew it. If by chance all this just happened. God is the creator of all things. Let's finish reading. Look at verse 4. What came into being in Jesus Christ was life, and the life was the light of all people the world over. John wrote that the light uh, radiance that came into being in the life of Jesus, of Jesus made visible to all people of the earth. He is visible God. First John 1 and 1 declares that which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched. 
this we proclaim concerning the word of life. So God created everything. He was in the beginning before anything happened. And like I said earlier, he said in his word, he prepared a place for us before we anything was, was created. Like I said, he couldn't get out there in the middle of, of the going to stop and try to prepare a play for us. He prepared that play for us before anything happened. Because when his redemptive plan gets started, there's nothing going to stop it. There's nothing going to stop it. He, he said, John proclaimed that before anything existed, there was Jesus. Not by chance. Not this just this just happened. It don't happen just like that. But people will argue with you that then and they'll argue with you about that today. But I pray when this lesson, Sunday school lesson is over, that we'll be all on the same page. That we'll gain victory over the non-belief. But they say oh, there'll always be them people that are not unbelievers. They'll be caught up when Christ come back. And he'll, he'll be hollering and crying and all this is. You know what I'm saying? I gave you half the time. I, I left my word there for you. I left my word for you and gave you half the time to, to get it together. Look at, look at my verse 5. Jesus' life has brought a light, a truth, and an under, and a understanding of moral goodness that shineth in the dark and exposed the more depravity and all the evil and sin that has broken nations and people's lives through centuries. The light still shines because had not been able to comprehend it or extinguish it. We are the beneficiaries. Listen at this here close. Saint, look at the one in the standing in the background. And I'm going to add the ones that's going to be doing this lesson. We are the beneficiaries of that light. As surely as we know, that surely, as surely as were those who saw a, and heard Jesus more than 2,000 years ago, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God because he given us all the time in the world, telling us that Jesus, it was, it was in the beginning, and he is the light, and the light of all men. So we got to believe that in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. All of this here now is unfolding. Like I said, you can, uh, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. You can reject it or you can accept it. But this is the truth. God created everything. By chance had no, no, no way he could do what God has done. By chance didn't know when it gets started. Only God know what, when to start this. So God is behind all of this. Jesus Christ, our Lord, he sent this, he sent Jesus down upon this earth. As I said back here, in here, in our, in our Bible background, that he came into this world to bring on a redeeming that bring on the God creation, and he is the redeeming agent in the world. He came as a redeeming agent. So let's all, uh, we need to believe in what's going on in this world today, that God is behind all this. Jesus Christ is all behind all this. 
all the creation, everything that we see. He created. He said, if anything was created, God created it all. And without him, nothing was created. Now, let's see what's happening now when we accept Christ. When we accept the word, look at what, what, what we're going to gain. Look at John chapter 1, verse 6 to 13. It's a cheering of God. How do we become children of God? By accepting Christ as our person say. Look what it says. Look at verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. For it says he was as a witness to, to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. And that is the only way we're going to become children of God. Accept Christ and believe. That gives us the right to become children of God. We'll hear it again in this lesson. Look at verse 8. He himself was not the witness. He came only as a witness to the light. Verse 9 says, The true light that giveth light, and everyone was concerned was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made through him. The world, the world did not recognize him. Did not recognize him. They didn't know who he was. Let's read the reading and see what happened. Look at verse 12. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. And, and you see, they didn't know it. But the ones that accepted him, and believed in him, they had the right to become children of God. Like he said, his word will endure forever. All this other stuff that we live with, cars, money, houses, all this stuff are giving us but anxiety. Where else is death? Trying to hold on to it or, or what or et cetera. This will endure forever. The word of God will endure forever. Look at verse 13. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband, will, but born. Of God. <clears throat> this is how we become children, of, how we have the right to become children of God. We accept Christ and believe on Him. Now let's read our commentary and see just how this turned out. Look at our commentary. Look at verse 6 to 8. It could be said that John the Baptist was the first one in Jesus' day to point people to Jesus as the light. He said, he, could, he, could, he said, uh, John the Baptist was the first one in, in Jesus' day to point people to Christ as the light. This produced a ripple, ripple effect that led others to believe and bear witness to Jesus as the light. They're quite a legacy. John the Baptist came as a witness to testify concerning that that light so that through him all people might believe. And see, John was already there. God sent him ahead to let, him, let us know that the light is coming. And say he was the first one to witness. As a light. So like I said, we got ample time. We can believe this morning. Or we can not believe. But this morning, I'm going to believe. I'm going to believe on God's words here this morning. That God is the creator of all things. There's no other way this here happens. People can say what they want to say, 
But if you take a look around, and if all I know as of today, I ain't never known nobody to create nothing. Be no creator. I don't care what you see. God is the source of all that you see. Car, all them elements belong to God. Buildings and bricks and all that stuff belong to God. He's the source of all that. All this stuff was put there by God. He's the creator of all things. Okay, let's finish reading. He came to lead others to Christ, the Messiah, to drag all human beings to the light of the world. Verses 9 through 11, even though Jesus made the world and everything in it, the world did not recognize him. Even his own people, Israel, the Jews, Jewish nation, did not recognize him for who he was. And sadly, best, numbers of people still fail to receive Jesus in our own day. So I say, there's a lot of people now feeling that they really recognize Jesus today. But I know he is the revelation. He is Christ, the Lord. And I'm going to accept that. Anybody else that don't want to reject it, that's their problem. And he sent me here by here this morning to tell you that he is the one and the only one. Verse 12 and 13, there was a few such as the author of the Gospel of John who did receive Jesus and accepted him for who he was. To them, Christ gave them the right to become children of God. And that's the only way we're going to become children of God. I talk to a lot of people that work on God love us. Yeah. But do you believe? Do you believe that because he loves us, that he is the light of the world? It's easy to say yes. But do you believe that in your heart? You can say yes, mouth. But do you believe that in your heart? All God asked of his people, Israel, was that they trust him and save him, but they refused him. To this day, all those who believe and receive Jesus and receive Jesus are reborn. They are born of God, not of natural descent, as said earlier, nor of human decision. Neither a husband nor a wife will, but are born again to life as followers of Jesus Christ. And that's the only way we're going to have to make it. We're going to have to follow that narrow path, that straight and narrow path. There's no way to turn to the left, and there's no way to turn to the right. We're going to have to follow that narrow path, all the ones who believe. You can start this going, there's a lot of backslid that went on down that narrow path, but lost. They went and turned around and went back and got back on that wide path again. And that wide, wide path of where they say leads to destruction. And we want to follow Jesus. It said that, it said that they are, are born of God. They are born of God, not of natural descent, nor of human decision. Neither as a husband, nor a wife. But born as, but are born again to life as followers of Jesus Christ. I'm gonna keep on following Christ. I'm gonna keep on going down that straight and narrow. 
and I tell you, going down this street and there, it's, 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 it's a move of pain. But he tell you, when you get to the end of that tongue, there's light at the end of that tongue. And some writers say, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing it would be. When we all see Jesus, we can shake, we can sing and shout the victory. Just keep on following Jesus. Keep on going. Keep on following Jesus. We're going to fall and make mistakes and we're seeing. But what we got to do is get up. Keep on keeping on. I can we forgive us. He know we just near dust. And we're going to make mistakes. But that's because we made all these mistakes. Don't let Satan make you think of you done made all these state mistakes. It's over for you. Keep on keeping on. Because some writer said said that final try out. Keep on marching on until we reach that city of the light. He is a perfecter of our faith and the founder of our faith. He said, keep on. Keep on keeping on. Keep the faith. And when I see you again, I'm going to perfect that faith for you. Let's keep on keeping on until the day we meet. And that's what I plan on doing. I'm going to keep on keeping on. I'm going to keep on being the follow of Christ. Like I say, it ain't easy. It's a rough situation. But he promised us and like I say, that place he built for us before he, anything happened, foundation of the world, that place already built. Like I say, he couldn't stop his whole wow, I made a mistake. I got to make, you know, prepare a place for them. But he already prepared that place before time ever started. He tell you the word, I prepared a place for you before anything ever was formed. He put a mountain. I'm going to keep on being the father of Jesus Christ. Come on. Let's look at our next segment. It's John 1, chapter 1, verse 14. The words glory. The words glory. Look at what verse 14 say. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory. Glory of the Lord. <clears throat> the glory of the one and only son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now let's just see what that verse 14 actually was just saying on that. He says, these verses have been interpreted to mean that Jesus made his dwelling among us. He did. He came down on his cross and died for our sin, but he came down and dwelt among us, just like us. He got up off his raw throne took off his royal robe, laid it on the arm of his throne, took off his crown and put it right there in the seat and came down on his earth to dwell among us and live like us. Live like man. That is, they made his dwelling among us. Other ways the scriptures say, other ways to translate these terms is to say, that Jesus set up a tent here. He did. He set up a tent here, which suggests the temporary nature of God sojourn as a human being. That's what I got you saying. He took off all that stuff. Got up off his, his crown, his, his uh, uh, crown, his uh, throne. Put his robe on the arm, laid his crown in his seat. And came down up on his earth and dwelt among us. And they said that another way to translate the, these terms is to say that Jesus set up a tent here. It suggests that the temporary nature of Christ is during as a human being. He was God on earth. The incarnation and the union of divinity and humanity. And yet, in other sense, the presence of Jesus Christ among and within us was, was and is everything but temporary. 
He'll dwell with us forever. But when it, he came, it takes temporary. But his dwelling among us is not temporary. He'll live among us. And, 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 the, and the writer of Hebrew put it, because Jesus himself suffered when he was tempted. He is able to help those who are being tempted. The word became flesh, real human, and walked among us. The author, John, had seen the glory that has come from God. The one and only Son, Jesus Christ, and he testified that Jesus is full of grace and truth. And he is <coughs> the one sent from God. He is the glory that God sent on this earth. And then you know that he is the creator of all things. And God had to send him here. God had to send him to be the redeemer, redeeming agent in the world. So Jesus had to come here and straighten all this out. But we're letting you know from the start that he is who he says. He is the beginning, the word, and the word was with God. And the word was God. We had to have all that ahead of what he came here to do. And knowing he's God, he created everything. And the scripture says without him, nothing that was created was created. All things created by him. He is the source of all. He created everything. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. He sent me here this morning to teach this Sunday school <clears throat> lesson to tell you, let the word tell you that he is the one. He is the creator of all things. He is the creator of this whole thing. We see this whole thing. All the heavens we see up there. In the heavens beyond, he is a redeeming light of the world. I'm going to keep on following Jesus. I'm going to keep on following him straight down that straight and narrow. It might be a lonely road going down that straight and narrow. But I'll take it. Because he has made us a promise. He told us when we get, I got to prepare a place for you. And so the foundation of the world, so the mountain or anything before, he made sure that that was ready for us. When that is ready, when that redeem, when that redeeming thing came. He have a, a redemptive path thing for us. He, he, he got to play the path for us on this journey. He had a, rede a redemption plan for us. That's why he created all this before the foundation of the world. So when we got started, he didn't have time to stop in the middle of his redemption plan. We're going to keep on, and when all this said and done, he ain't got to worry about preparing because it's already prepared for us. So he keep on marching on. Keep on marching on. To the city of the light. And we'll all get to heaven. We can rejoice. And we'll all see Jesus. We can sing and shout the victory. So this morning, I sent me back to tell you that in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. He decreed on everything, all things. And there is no other way things could be made. That was made. And Jesus Christ is the one who made them. I ain't never seen nobody else create nothing. God created everything. So I pray this morning. If you didn't believe. That you would believe. After hearing God's word this morning. <clears throat> he is the creator of all things. Without him nothing was made. That was made. 
He did it. I well, hope you enjoyed this Sunday school lesson. And then it will put you to thinking. Because he said he coming back to get all the ones that believe on him. To believe that he was a Christ. But the scripture already say this. People right now don't believe it. But I'm going to believe. So when he come back to get his people, I want to be one of them. I believe he's coming back. If you don't believe he's coming back, I feel sorry for you. Because the day of his return, when you see him here in the sky, I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm going to shout the victory. We come back to get his people. So I pray that you all got some out this lesson this morning. And that you heard something that will change your mind. Let us pray. Most gracious, kind, and heavenly Father, come this morning, Lord, with a heart of thanks and praise to once again. Thankful and grateful, dear Lord, that you're worried that you left your worry behind. That you didn't leave me in limbo. That you laid your word out before me. That I could understand it, that you are the creator of all things. Because I know that you are the creator. I didn't do it. Paparazzi didn't do it. You are the creator of all things. And I'm so grateful to take this and left a worry behind, Lord, and told me to bring it to your people this morning. I pray, dear Lord, that they got some out of the lesson, that they will change their mind. All the ones that will. So I'm just grateful and thankful, dear Lord, for your word, how you left it behind and laid it all out for us. In the Bible, in the Holy Bible, it's all written down. So we don't have no excuse. So I'm just so grateful and thankful this morning, dear Lord. I ask you to be with us throughout the rest of the day. And I'll be careful to give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. Because it's all belong to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.